Hello and welcome to Learn English with Jojo. This video is going to be about glottal stops and velar stops. The reason I put them together is because they are very similar and it seemed weird to separate them into two different videos. So before I get started, I just wanted to say that this video is probably not going to be very good for beginners or intermediate learners of English because it's not really something that is super important actually. It's not going to be something you want to focus on when you're just learning how to be understood in English because you can totally go without using glottal stops or velar stops and be 100% understood. But if you are already advanced in your English learning, it might be something that can help you sound more like a native speaker and something that can help you with your listening comprehension because it's something that we say all the time as native speakers, depending on which country you're from and which region you're from, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later. So let's get into it. First, I'm going to explain what glottal stops are and what velar stops are. Then I'm gonna give you a couple examples from other English speaking countries than America. I am American, so I'm going to obviously show you what my accent sounds like, but I thought it would be nice to see a couple other accents just to help you see what this is all about. And then I'm gonna give you 10 or so examples of glottal stops or velar stops, and at the end, a couple phrases um, where we use glottal stops, a couple common phrases. So let's get started. Why are they called glottal stops? Glottal is such a weird, a weird word. Why, why, why? Glottal comes from the word glottis, which is this part of the throat glottis. A glottal stop is where we cut the sound off in a word or at the end of a word going into a new word with our glottis. For example, the word certain, 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 avec, avec, why am I speaking French? With my American accent, I use a glottal stop for that word. I say certain, 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 in. Do you see how I cut the word off in the middle? I don't pronounce the T, but I say cert in. So we're going to see lots of words like that in this video. But in a British accent, in like a standard British accent, RP or received pronunciation, however you want to call it, they would say certain, certain, certain. I don't know if I'm doing that well, but they pronounce the T. So to practice a glottal stop, we are going to use the expression, it's not really a word, a sound basically. When something bad happens, um, let's say someone drops some, some water on someone else, they will say, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. That is using a glottal stop. They're cutting off the sound in the middle of that expression. Uh, Oh, uh, oh, try it. Uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. There's also glottal stops. Basically, when we cough, <coughs> that's using the back of the throat, the glottis, to cut off the sound, even though we'd never really think about it. <coughs> uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Okay, I hope you practiced a little bit. Now we're gonna talk about velar stops, which is very similar, but it's a little bit farther forward in the mouth. So it's probably around here, where the glottal stop is around here. It's kind of difficult to explain, but a velar stop is basically the G sound. It's like when you're gargling some water. It's like that. So you're gonna be cutting off the sound in the back of the throat, mostly to make a G sound, even though there are some other velar sounds besides the G sound. For example, going, going. At the end of the word, I say going. Going, 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 going. A little bit like that. The first G in the word going is really pronounced going, g-owing. But the second G is g, g, g. It's very light, very soft. Going, going, going. Okay, 
So now let's take a look at a Scottish accent because there are a lot of glottal stops in the Scottish accent. So let's look at Ewan McGregor, the actor who was in Star Wars and a lot of other movies, but he says this. And I pulled up beside him and I started raging at him. You idiot, you fucking idiot. Like this, and my daughters were going like that, dad. Did you notice how he said the word daughter? With my accent, my American accent, I say daughter with an alveolar stop, which is something I haven't talked about in this video, but it's basically the stop, stopping a word at the roof of your mouth with your tongue for a T. In the American accent, it's very, very common. Daughter, 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 daughter. I don't know if you can see into my mouth, but I'm stopping it at the roof of my mouth, daughter. In this little interview with Ewan McGregor, he says, daughter, daughter, daughter. Daughters, 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 daughters. He's stopping it at the glottis, daughter, daughter. Really, the real pronunciation of, pronunci pronunciation of this word is daughter with the T sound, but a lot of people don't pronounce that T with their words. Daughter. Ter, daughter, daughter. Did you notice the difference? The first one with, was with a received pronunciation without a glottal stop, daughter. The second one was with that Scottish glottal stop, daughter. And the third one was with my American accent, the alveolar stop, daughter. And I pulled up beside him and I started raging at him. I started raging at him. Started, 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 started raging at him. Okay, now let's look at Russell Brand, who has a sort of Cockney accent, though I'm not sure it's exactly Cockney, but he's from London. And let's look at what he says in his interview with a British politician. That's where that frustration emanates from. It certainly mm. isn't apathy, Ed. It's a sense of what's the point? What we feel mm. is like, well, they, you know, the suffragettes, they may have given their lives for the mm. right to vote. So here he says, what's the point? What's the point? What's the point? Again, we have two glottal stops. We have what, which is a very clear glottal stop. Oh, oh, oh. We're really in the throat there. What's the point? And point, we also stop in the glottis, but it's a little bit softer. What? That's very British because it, it's, I don't think I do it right with my mouth because it's not natural for me. I say, what, what? I use the schwa sound, which is something very American. Uh, he says, oh, what, what, what's the point? What's the point? And I say, what's the point? Okay, but I don't pronounce any of those T's. He also uses a glottal stop when he says the word vote. That's me using the T sound, but he says vote, vote. For the right mm. to vote. And I would probably say vote. Yeah, I would also cut it off at the glottis. Vote, vote for me, vote for me. Okay, so I hope that gave you a little bit more insight into glottal stops from different cultures and countries. And now we're gonna go into our examples. The first example that we already saw, but I want you to repeat with the glottal stop, try to actually do the glottal stop right after me. Do certain, certain. These first examples are going to be like that with the T in the middle of a word. And it's a very American thing to do to pronounce it like this. I think British people would probably say certain, certain. Certainly, certainly. I would say certainly, certainly. Okay, the next word is mountain, mountain, mountain. I love to ski in the mountains. Okay, the next word is forgotten, forgotten. I've forgotten how to use glottal stops. The next word is button, button. My shirt doesn't have any buttons. The next word is continent, 
in it. This one we are skipping two T's. Cut in it. I probably stop the second T like a alveolar stop because there's the N sound right before, so I probably just stop it with my tongue. Cut in it. Yeah, I stop it with my tongue, the second one. So the first one is a glottal stop. The second one is a tongue stop. I think it's kind of like an alveolar stop. Continent. There are seven continents. Now here are some with the T at the end of the word, and this is going to be similar in American and British English. So, want, want. I want that. I want that. Then we have the word that. That. I want that. I can't think of another example. I want that. And then we have light. Light. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. And hit. Hit. Don't make me hit you. Don't make me hit you. Did you see how I also used one in don't? Don't. Don't make me hit you. Okay, I hope you understood those. Now let's look at a few velar stops with this G sound. We have going, like we saw at the beginning of the video. Going. I'm going to school. Then we also have sing. Sing. Sing me a song. Sing me a song. Sing me a song, you're a piano man. And finally we have wrong. Wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. Okay, now let's look at a few little phrases that will use the glottal stop. We have, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Did you see how I stopped it with that T there in let? Let? Let's go. Let's go. I don't say let's go. Let's go. Ouch, that hurt. Ouch, that hurt. That hurt a lot. Did you notice that I said it in that hurt? That hurt. I stopped it twice. So when you become really, really good at glottal stops, you'll be able to do it more than once in one sentence and in consecutive words, you'll be able to do it. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope it was interesting for you. I hope you learned something and I hope it wasn't too difficult if you weren't already an advanced speaker of English. There are many ways you can help me out and help this YouTube channel out if you would like to. The first way is that you can share this video, you can like this video, you can comment down below and ask me a question or say that you appreciate it. It always makes me feel good and keeps me motivated when I hear people actually learn something from my videos. And then if you would like to go one step further, you can support me on Patreon, patreon.com slash English with Jojo, and you can give me a monthly donation of $1, $2, $5, something like that, so that I can continue making videos into the future, and hopefully this might become my full-time job one day. That would be awesome to be a YouTuber as an actual profession. So, thank you very much for watching. I hope it was helpful. Leave a question for a future video or a suggestion to make these videos even better and more helpful for you. Bye!